We have the sand. We have the sea. We even have the sunshine. Welcome to the Sander Said Summer Special. Summer special, a special holiday club done online for all you guys. And we're here at our Imagination Beach. Oh, I like Imagination Beaches. I should introduce myself first. This is Jim. Um, he's uh, he's always around with me somewhere. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, you should have introduced yourself, silly. Oh no, I have to cover. Now, my name's Chris, and I'm the children of the family's pastor. At All Saints Sandersted. Yay! All Saints Sandersted! Which is great. So, shall we get on with today's summer special? Yeah, we should, we should. And do you know why we're down on the beach? Because cause we like building sandcastles. That's right. And this holiday club's all about building. Building walls and temples and rebuilding, in fact. But shall, we'll get on to that in a moment or two. Will we? We will. It's all about a chap called Nehemiah and how he rebuilt the walls in Jerusalem. So we're going to sing a special little song that I've written for the Holiday Club. We are? We are. And you'll know the tune because it's to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Shall we give it a go? Yeah, OK. You can come back up in a minute, Jim. All right. I'm going to go down here and sing. All right, you go down there and sing. And I'll go and grab my guitar, and it's a very new song, so I might make a few mistakes, but let's give it a go, shall we? We are building God's wall, our enemies have made it fall, with God's help. Well, we're seeing that every day just to remind us of the story and how we can be part of it too. But more about that later. Now, the chap I'm talking about today, uh, one of my puppets is going to play the part of Nehemiah. Now, I don't think Nehemiah looked like this at all, but this is this is Josh. Come here, Josh. All right. Hi, Josh. Hi. So you're going to be Nehemiah? Yes, I am. Okay, then. So, so... When, every time you see Josh, think Nehemiah. Nehemiah! Very good. Okay, Josh, you go over there and get ready for the story. Now then, Nehemiah had a really, really important job to do. He was cupbearer to the king, and he may have come bearing cups like this on a tray. And of course, the king was always to be served first. So, um, so, so here, here is his drinks, and only one of them's poured. And actually, it hasn't got real wine in it, because I'm sure the king would have drunk real wine. But this is, um, this is just like a handkerchief um, that I've, I've put in there. 
just to represent the wine. And I'm going to do a little magic trick for you, because I don't know if you knew that about me, but I do sometimes do magic tricks. And I just thought this would help to remind us how Nehemiah was the cup bearer to the king. So I'm going to bear these cups to the king. Now you have to keep an eye on the one with the wine in it, or the hanky, and I'm going to make the wine jump from this cup to this cup to this cup and then back again all by a magic trick would you like to see that okay you ready You're watching all the way down and all the way back okay one two three boom there you go happened really quick did you see it, it went all the way along and all the way back again huh what well, you wanted to actually see it do oh i see well don't worry you don't worry i can um i can do that watch this so this time i'll make it stop at the cup at the other end okay all right then, here we go. All right, then. So I'll just pop it behind my back while I do this. One, two, three, whoop, there it goes. It jumps all the way into the other cup and now it's at the other end, see? Huh? You think I turned it round? No, no, no. Now, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll let you see my back when I do it this time, okay? Is that all right? Okay, then I'll just, uh, yes, okay, so here we go. Oh, there it goes again, whoop, hey, yep. There we are. You see, it's jumped all the way back into this cup. Isn't that amazing? You think I'm still turning it round? What, like this? Would I do that to you? That would be cheating. <sighs> yes, I do sometimes cheat. I tell you what, I tell you what, I will make it jump into the middle cup this time. And if I can make it jump into the middle cup, would you give me a massive round of applause? You would. Fantastic. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Okay, I have a magic word for this. So the magic word is upside down cake. Okay, you ready? We're going to shout upside down cake. One, two, th three, upside down cake. <gasps> and he jumped into the middle cup. Ta-da! Oh, look, a pair of glasses. No thanks, I've already got one. Right, brilliant. That was fun, wasn't it? Well, what are we going to do next? Oh, I tell you what, before we get on to the story, um, we're going to uh, go in and speak to somebody today and ask them about how they built a friendship with God. Because it's not only about building walls, this holiday club, isn't it? No, it's not. It is about building a friendship with God, which is what Nehemiah was doing all along. Come on, that's amazing. So Jim here has gone round and interviewed a few people from the church uh, to find out what their top tips are for building a friendship with God. So the first one, I think, today is Sandra. Yay! So let's go and find out what Sandra has to say about this. Hello, Sandra. Are you all right? I'm fine, thank you, Jim. How are you? I'm, I'm just going to check if the camera is working. Yeah, it's working. OK. Right, um, um, I have a question for you. Uh-huh. Um, um, how long have you been a friend with God? I have been a friend with God since I was a little girl, since I was nine years old. Really? I'm not even nine Very long yet. time ago. Goodness me, that's really exciting. Um, and, 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 and our other question is, um, um, what is your top tip for actually building a relationship or building a friendship with God? Um, I think you should always be, expect to be surprised by God. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, there's a phrase, um, expect great things from God and accept great things from God. Sometimes we ask God for things, but we don't realise that he wants to give us lots of things, good things in return. That's amazing! <laughs> Thank you very much, Sandra. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that was a really good tip, wasn't it, Jim? Yeah, of course. I learned a lot. You learned a lot. That's good. Well, now, Jim, we're going to tell the story of Nehemiah, or at least the first part of the story of Nehemiah. I'm so excited I can explode! Boom! OK, well, just don't explode. OK, I've got the story written down over here and I'll read it out. OK, and try not to interrupt too much. I'll try not to. OK, then. Well, our story doesn't concern building a sandcastle. It's all about rebuilding a city wall, as I said, and God's temple within it. And as in all of the books of the Bible, there is a star of this story. Is it me? No, it's not you. The star is usually a human being who shares the action with him. And because, um, and, and because of that, we call them a hero of the faith. 
A hero of the faith. Yes, that's right. And our hero of the faith today is called Nehemiah. And remember, Josh is playing Nehemiah, so here he is. And um, <coughs> anyway, he was called Nehemiah. Because he was short. What do you mean? Because he was knee high. No, he was not called Nehemiah because he was knee high, silly. No, he was actually, his name actually meant in Hebrew, um, God comforts. God comforts, hmm. That's a good name. It is a good name. Now, Nehemiah was one of God's chosen people, the Israelites, or sometimes called the Jews in later days, who lived in God's chosen city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. But God's chosen people had messed up big time. Uh -oh. Yes, they messed up and they'd stopped following God and obeying his laws. So God stopped protecting them from their enemies. Oh, no. And one day they were captured by the Babylonians and almost everyone who lived there was carried off to serve the Babylonian Empire. And only a handful of people were left behind to run things for the Babylonian kings. Oh, that's terrible. Well, Nehemiah must have been something very special because he got given a brilliant job. He was cupbearer. He was cupbearer. We said that, cupbearer to the king. This was an important job because it meant he got to see the king every single day. And uh, the king was called Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes, that's a strange name. It is a very weird name to say, but it's even weirder to spell. Anyway, one day, Nehemiah got a visit to the palace for himself, a visitor. Oh yeah. And it was his brother who lived in Jerusalem, in Nehemiah's hometown. So, of course, Nehemiah wanted to hear all the news about God's own city. Yeah. But it wasn't good news. Oh, no. No, it wasn't good. His brother told him, those who survived the exile are back in the province and they're in great trouble and disgrace. Oh, yeah. And the wall of Jerusalem is broken down. <sighs> what was that? I was being the wall, being broken down. Okay, lovely. <laughs> anyway, so yes, it was broken down and burned with fire. The gates were also broken. So when he heard these things, Nehemiah sat down and he wept. For some days he mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. He prayed to God for mercy. He said sorry for all the bad things that his nation, the Israelites, or the Jews, had done. For not keeping God's laws. They'd been naughty. They had been naughty, really. And for going their own way. He'd asked God to listen to the, his people, to hear their cries of sorrow, and to set them free to become their father and friend once again. So he prayed. Yeah, Nehemiah prayed a lot. Nehemiah believed that God would help them, but he wasn't quite sure how. And he was still extremely sad about what had happened to God's city. So the next time he went into the king's presence, he was very sad. The king could see it on his face. It was a great sadness. Now, Nehemiah must have been quite jolly usually because the king actually noticed how sad Nehemiah was. And he asked him all about it and why he was so sad. So Nehemiah said, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? King Artaxerxes then asked, what is it then you want? Now Nehemiah sent a very quick prayer up to heaven. Whoosh, really quick. He sent it up like an arrow. And God replied with a thunderbolt. <laughs> Not a real thunderbolt, but just a big answer to that little prayer. And remarkably, the king was in agreement to help Nehemiah. Nehemiah said to the king, if it pleases you, sire, if your servant has found favour in your sight, let me be sent to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. And remarkably, the king said, yes, he did say yes. But not only that, the king provided wood to be used in rebuilding the city. 
and soldiers to protect Nehemiah on his journey. Nehemiah was a friend of God's and he answered Nehemiah's prayer. You could say that God had given this job to Nehemiah because his heart was completely and utterly in the right place and that God wanted his city and people back. Later on, I will tell you what happened when Nehemiah got to Jerusalem. Cool. Now we're going to have a quick quiz now. I should have warned you about this. It's a true or false. So what I want you to do, if you think it's true, I want you to jump over into this corner of your room. And if you think it's false, you know, I want you to jump over into this corner of your room. And I'll put little signs up so that you can tell the difference. Okay? All right then. True? False. Brilliant. So stand in the middle for the moment and I will, I, now I want to know if these things are true or false. So number one, number one is Nehemiah was plate bearer to the king. Is that true or false? True or false? Jump now. Do, 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 do. It was false. Oh, I knew that. He was a cup bearer. He was a cup bearer. That's right. Well done. Everybody back into the middle. We've got another question now. Okay, then. Is it true or false? Nehemiah's brother said that the wall around Jerusalem was broken and in an awful state. Is that true? Did he say that? True or is it false? He didn't say that. And I can tell you that it is true. True, he did say that. He told him how terrible the wall was looking. Brilliant, well done everybody. Okay, last question. The king wouldn't let Nehemiah go to rebuild the wall. Is that true or is that false? Jump now. Have you jumped? Brilliant. It was false. The king did let Nehemiah go and rebuild the wall. So, well done everybody for listening. We'll have the second part of the sto today's story after some craft. Do you like doing craft? I do. I'm very, very crafty. Crafty, crafty, crafty. Okay. Well, we'll all be back here in a moment or two for the rest of the story. But now, let's go and do some craft. Hi there. Hi. Well, how did you get on with the story? Did you enjoy the story? And how did you do with the quiz? Did you get the answers right? Well, we're going to do a little craft activity now that's to sort of to do with the story. And we learnt about Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was the, do you remember he was the cup bearer for the king? And that meant that he had to taste all the king's food and drink, have a taste of all his, his drink to make sure it wasn't poisoned because the king was very fearful of his enemies and people trying to poison him. So we're going to play a little game now called a tasting game and you can do this at home and you can think of all sorts of things you can get your family to taste. Try to make them not too revolting and make sure that it's food and not washing powder or something like that. I think we need to keep it as food but you can choose all sorts of different things to taste. So we're going to start by putting a, a blindfold on. So Sue's going to put her blindfold on. I hope it's not too revolting. Right, these are the... So we have three drinks here. So I'm going to put one in front of you. Yeah, so you can start with that one. What do you think that one is? It doesn't smell of anything. No, no idea. Go on, have a taste. It's cold. Be brave. Oh dear. Very pleasant. And what do you think that is? Well, I think that might be water. You're right, it is. Okay, okay. if you That's move that good. to one side. Right. So there's your next one. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. Try that. Oh, now, this has really got a smell to this. Has it? And I, that's a good thing about having a nose, isn't it? It's, um, it, I think I know what this is without even tasting okay. it. What do you think it is? I think it's apple juice. Right, give it a taste. 
It is, isn't no. it? Apple juice. Done. Yeah, and now try that one. It's I've been quite kind in these tastings. Yes. Is so try that one. See, does that one smell? Oh, yes. <laughs> this reminds me of my school day. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Sue. It doesn't you only have to have a tiny taste. We used to get them in bottles and they were always warm when we got them in the ah, classroom. So you've guessed already. I think I know what this is. So just wet your lips. Mm. I thought it was going to be champagne, but never mind. It was, um, it's milk, isn't it? It is milk. It's well milk. done. Three out of three. Well done. Okay. Now, shall we give Sandra the things to taste? Oh, I think that And you can, um, you I can watch I think her. that would be a really right, good idea. Okay. I'm going to get the things for Sandra. Right. Okay, now it's Sandra's turn. And Sandra is going to taste three different things off spoons. Oh, dear. So I'm going to give you that one first. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a teaspoon, don't tip it up. Okay. okay, so what do you think? A bit nervous here. <laughs> oh, it's quite nice. That's very sweet. Mm. So what do you think that is? I think that might be honey. Well done. Oh, that okay. tastes very nice. Oh, right, okay. Right. okay, then there's... There's your next one. Right. I don't know you'll like this. I like all of these, but then it's okay. personal taste, isn't it? I'm a bit nervous about this. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Maybe that's something that Sandra doesn't like. No. Oh. Do you know what it is? Is it peanut butter? It is peanut oh. butter. <laughs> In fact, I'm not very keen on peanut butter. <laughs> oh dear. Let's try this one. That's the last one. Right, you don't okay. have to put the whole spoon in. You can just take a bit off the tip of the spoon. Oh, looks sticky. Oh, it's salty. Ooh. Oh dear. It's another one that Sandra doesn't like. I think it's like Marmite, isn't it? You either love it or hate it. You're close, it. but not quite Marmite. I don't know. It's Bovril. Oh, right. Mm. Yeah, yes. again, I think it's one of those things you, you love or you like. hate. No, I'm so, I'm well done, Sandra, for trying and tasting those things. So, you can try this at home. Yes. You can. You can have some good things to taste. Let's see what you've got in your mum's cupboard. I believe it's the Sanderstead Summer Special! <laughs> sandcastles we can build today. Of course, Nehemiah wasn't building sandcastles. He was building a wall. Um, I wonder if he used any sand. Probably not. Probably just mostly stone and masonry. But, uh, but yes, we're going to go and dig some nice big foundations now for our wall as we get ready to build or rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. Lovely. Well, welcome back everyone to part two. Now, you remember the story so far? Yes? Brilliant. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get back onto that in a minute, but let's sing a song first. And this is a song about hearing God calling you, because sometimes in fact, very often, God calls people to do special jobs for him, like he called Nehemiah. Yay! But it wasn't just Nehemiah that gets called. We get called too. So should we sing this song together? It's called, I Hear You Calling Me. Three, four.
own city Jerusalem and do you remember how God had moved through King Arthur I can't even say it now Artaxerxes to send Nehemiah to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall yeah I remember well when he got there Nehemiah inspected the wall at night because he didn't want anybody to know what he was doing it was a secret oh a secret <clears throat> so he found out just how bad the damage was for himself and it was pretty bad so the next day he gathered everyone in the city together so he could tell them his plans and get their help for the work he said to them you see the trouble we are in jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire come let us rebuild the wall of jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace and embarrassed i don't like being embarrassed it's like when your trousers fall down, when your belt isn't tight enough. Oh no, that's really embarrassing. Yeah, that it would be very embarrassing. But uh, yes, <clears throat> anyway, where were we? Um, he also told them about the gracious hand of God and all the things that King Artaxerxes had done for them and had said to him. So the people then replied, let's start rebuilding. Yay! You can all say, let's start rebuilding, if you like, because we're going to rebuild God's wall. And not like a sandcastle. Not like a sandcastle. we are build it of stones. we are build it of stones and make sure it doesn't fall down. So the people are, were really, really excited about it. But you know what? There were some people there who weren't excited about it. People who weren't Jews. And they thought it was very unfair. And... One of them was called Sambalat, the Horonite. Oh, Sambalat. Sambalat, that's right. Tobiah, the uh, Ammonite official, was another one, and Geshem, the Arab. And when they heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed the Jews. Did they? What's that mean? It, they made fun of them. What they went, nah, 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 you're no good. Well, something like that, yes. Well, that's really not nice, is it? No, it's not nice. So um, anyway, yes, they made fun of them. And they, they said, what's this you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Are you, are you trying to beat the king? They weren't trying to beat the king. The king was helping them. That's right. But Nehemiah said to them, the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. Ah, uh, but for you, you won't have any share in Jerusalem. No, 
or any claim to it. You see, Sam Ballard, Tobiah and Geshem were very jealous. Ooh, they're gone green. Yeah, they had gone green. And they would, they would do anything they could to stir up trouble for Nehemiah. So that the wall wouldn't be rebuilt. And we'll hear more about that tomorrow. Can I have a question? Yes. Uh, normally when I have a Bible story, it's got Jesus in it. Well, Jesus is all in the Bible. He's mostly in the New Testament, but he does appear in the stories because Jesus was there from the very beginning. Was he? Yeah. So I'm going to sing a little song about that. And we're going to find out where Jesus was in this story or what we can learn about Jesus from it. Go on then. Right. Jim has gone. No, I'm still here. Well, you've, you've gone out of the frame for the moment. So let's, let's do this special part of the Holiday Club, which I like to call, What's It Got To Do With Jesus? <laughs> We've all heard the Bible story And listened to all the different pieces It didn't mention him by name So what's it gonna do with Jesus? What's it got? What's it got? with God is never easy and Jesus sent the Holy Spirit down when he went back up to heaven to be with us and to help us with to do the really difficult things that being a friend of God's is all about the hard things you see Nehemiah had a big job to do but he knew with God's help he could do that job even when there were people trying to stand in his way, like Sam Ballot and friends. And sometimes there, there are people who will try to stand in our way and tell us that being friends with God isn't a good thing. And we need to be strong with God's Holy Spirit that Jesus sent us so that we can stand firm and do what God has called us to do. So... That's what it's got, that's what it's got, that's what it's got. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, thinking about being called by God, let's have a really nice little prayer now and speak to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you want to use us to do your work in this world to bless other people to be there for other folks and to tell them about you and your love lord we just hope and pray that we will hear you calling us when indeed you are speaking help us to hear your voice loud and clear and help us to be like nehemiah as he responded and went out and did exactly what you had called him to do. We thank you so much for being a part of your world that you created and the wonderful things that you are doing in it. In Jesus' name, Amen. It's the sound of said summer special, everyone. <laughs> it's nearly as good as grass. Thank you for that prayer. And now we're going to sing one more song. And this song is about being happy. And it's called, I Will Rejoice All The Time. It's hard to be happy all the time, but we can always have God's joy in our heart, even when we feel sad. So let's sing this song together. Thank you. 
summer specials to go and tomorrow we'll find out whether Nehemiah manages to rebuild the wall or not. <gasps> I hope he does. Um, but before you go, I've got a daily challenge for you. The Daily Challenge! That means a challenge that you've got to try and complete before tomorrow. So here's today's daily challenge. It's Shouldn't be too hard. Find somebody in your house and offer to make them a drink, a bit like Nehemiah would have done. So that could be a really nice thing to do for somebody who's thirsty. Might just be a glass of water, something really refreshing. Just see if you can do that before we actually come back together again tomorrow. All right then, and I'll ask you all about that tomorrow as well. So take care. And join us tomorrow when we have another It's a Santa State Summer Special! everybody 
I hope you've had a good time today and remember to send in your pictures of what you've been doing with your taste tests and everything like that. Send them into the office or maybe your drawings of Nehemiah. We can't wait to see them and share them on the 30th of August at the Sandstead Light Service. See you later.